6 o'clock. First on the agenda is the Copley Trust Fund meeting. And first on that is final approval for Copley Country Club funds. We've got that in our packet. Do you want to talk about that, Gloria or Dick? No? This is a formality, right, at this point? They're basically, yes. We waited a, the mandatory time and, yep. Kind of went into it in quite a bit of detail when they first came by. Yeah. Right. Yes. I move that we approve the uh, allocation request from Copper Country Club. Uh, for the amount of $21,794.20. I have a motion by Eric. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor by roll call. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. Dick? Aye. Aye. Gloria? <laughs> Motion is passed. Next, review and approve the minutes. Motion to approve the minutes. Second it. I have a motion by Eric and a second by Dick. Is there any further discussion on the minutes? All in favor by roll call, Judy. Brian. Aye. Gary. Aye. Eric? Aye. Dick? Aye. Gloria? Aye. Judy, are you there? We lost her. Yes, I'm here. Okay, you say aye on that? Yes, I do. Okay. Minute, minutes are passed. Is there any other business to copy trust? Um, we did receive another application today. I sent that to Gloria. Yeah. So we can determine those both star grades. I didn't want to put up so okay. We'll have to have a copy trust meeting soon. And I got an email today from the, uh, or read it today, <laughs> uh, from the uh, bank. They would like to come and talk to us. Great. So do you want? You want to set it up with get us a day that we need for that new one, whatever that is, and then we can maybe ask them to come at the same time. I'll arrange something. Okay. okay. Good. That sounds good. All right. Sounds good. Is there anything else for Copley Trust? <clears throat> I'll make a motion to adjourn the Copley Trust meeting. I have a motion by Eric to adjourn and a second by Gloria. All in favor say aye by roll call. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. Dick? Aye. Gloria? Okay. Motion is passed. We are adjourned from Copley Trust. Now we move into the regular select board meeting. At 6.03. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Dan? Yes, I have a one related to the road naming. I'd like to see that Abby is working with the, the two landowners to try to get them to come up with the mutually agreed upon name right now. They're both disagree about the name. If I don't have it resolved by the 19th, I'll come to the select board and let you guys decide. But we're trying to get them to agree upon a name, which is, I think, better for everybody. And then please add uh, an appointment to the Conservation Commission. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. Next, approve the minutes. Number one, uh, approve the minutes of March 15th, 2021. So moved. I have a motion by Eric and a Sorry. second by Gary. Is there any further discussion on these minutes? All in favor say aye by roll call, Judy. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. And Judy again? Hearing is not here now. <laughs> Motion is passed. Now the minutes of uh, March 25th, 2021. So I have a motion by Eric. Second. And a second by Gary. Is there any further discussion on these minutes? Hearing none, all in favor by roll call, Judy. 
I, I'm having problems with my internet, FYI. I gathered that. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. Motion is passed unanimously. Next, community concerns. Do we have any community concerns tonight? Yes, sir. I would like to, if I may. Go ahead. Could you introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, yes. My name is Tom Cloutier. I live uh, adjacent to Silver Ridge Road. And That's Bobby good, would be, thank you. You'd be surprised if I wasn't going to be talking about ATVs. But if I could read a little bit to you, please, I'd appreciate it. You want to read something? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, the ATV's use of town roads has become a hot issue for the residents of Mor Morristown, both for and against. We certainly respect the wishes of the ATV club desire to use some of the public roads in Morrisville. And though we disagree with it, we do see a need to air both sides at a town meeting as suggested by the select board. I, I'm here tonight, though, to talk <coughs> and uh, state my concern for ATV use on Silver Ridge Road. A trial period was passed on May 20th, 2019, after a motion by Mr. Town, which stated ATV use for 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., 25 mile an hour limit, a, and I quote here, a temporary trial period for 2019. It passed, five to nothing. A Silver Road resident, present at the meeting, expressed her concern for loud ATVs running up and down the road a number of times throughout the meeting. She was assured by Miss Town and the rest of the select board that the trial could be revoked, and I quote uh, Mr. Town, quickly at any time. It was also stated by Mr. D Dodge that, and I quote again, your quality of life as a resident was just as important as 100 ATVs getting to the gas station. It should be noted that during this meeting, it was expressed that the use of Silver Ridge Road was for the small local ATV club, so that they could get from Hyde Park to Max to get gas. Now, I strongly recommend watching and hearing that meeting on YouTube by going to YouTube and search Morristown Select Board Meeting 520-2019. It is quite the education. No extension for the trial period of, of 2019 has been given according to the merits, minutes of the Select Board. During the summer of 2020, a trailhead parking for ATVs appeared at the Sunset Motor Inn parking lot. No authorization from the board was given. Even more alarming was seeing out of this out of state plates on the trailers carrying the ATVs. Some ATVs are currently using Silver Ridge Road, although Vassar trails don't open until the middle of May. After contacting the town police, I was told that there, that any VASA rules don't apply to public roads. Therefore, nothing can be done unless they break the town laws. Thus, ATVs can use Silver Ridge Road 12 months of the year, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. <clears throat> Talking to the VASA representative in the, in the very office, even more disturbing since Mars Marsville, he said, since Morristown has no ordinance, it's, and I quote here, it's like the Wild West on the use of a public road. If the town residents want ATVs to use their public roads, and after a thorough discussion at town meetings followed by Australian ballots, so be it. They will have ATVs on their public roads. However, for Silver Ridge Road to continue as a trial period 
that began in 2019 and not extended, it should be revoked tonight by the select board. I am requesting a vote on this and to quote Mr. Town quickly tonight. Thank you, appreciate the time. Thank you, thanks for the, uh, the comment. <clears throat> I wasn't aware that it was, um, that 2019 was put in there. I was aware of the motion and I was aware of everything but that it was just for 2019. I know that part of it was not in the minutes, but I, I have not watched the GMA TV recorded portion. Does uh, any of the board know about that or? I don't, I haven't seen no. the video. We didn't, no. if. Uh, Excuse me, I, I, it, it's there. I mean, it's pretty clear. That's why I want everybody to read it, but I can't believe that the board voted on something that clearly it stated for the year 2019. But and whatever, if it's not there uh, and, and you don't know it, it's still, it still should be revoked tonight. Right, if it was only for 2019, then yes, I agree. The, one of the reasons we, we hadn't done anything on that is because we didn't get any feedback at all for two plus years. Um, I didn't get any personally and no one came to a meeting um, discussing either way on it. I even sought out the, the woman that was on um, the meeting you're talking about and uh, asked her how it was. And um, she said, well, they are, they are loud and um, they are dusty, but it's not that bad. And, um, but I don't recall it ever staying just for 2019. I was just talking to Chris Town today too, and I don't know if he would remember. Uh, well, well, it's pretty plain. Uh, when you look yeah. at the YouTube meeting, it, it's, uh, it's very plain and you can hear it quite distinctly. And uh, okay. we have written, and we have written late letters to you, and you know that, and my wife has, uh, oh. concerning the, the, the noise going to up and down uh, Civil Ridge Road, exactly what the, the woman that there expressed her concerns, the loud noise from ATVs going up and down Civil Ridge, it is there. Well, what I, I want to clarify to you is the reason we hadn't done anything and, and the comment that Chris said we could do something quickly if we had a lot of feedback that was negative, but we haven't had that. We have, you're right, our first, the first email to our board that I read was January 24th of this year, 2021, yeah. which is almost three years later. And we hadn't heard anything until then. We've had no one come to a meeting. We've had no one give us feedback. And I know because I did a search in my email for any emails from, from yourself or your wife or anybody for that matter um, with, with any negativity about it because we can. And, and if it is fact, in fact, uh, we only made that motion for 2019, then, then I stand corrected. And um, you're right, we, we certainly can revoke it or, or actually there wouldn't be a valid uh, um, allowance right now. It would have been at the end of 2019. That's exactly what it's, if you, when you look at the YouTube, that's exactly what it's saying. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's clear. But, okay. but Mr. Uh, Bob, you indicated yeah. to me that you have gotten a lot of feedback on the use of it, some 50% positive and 50% negative. Right, you this year. You told me that. Uh, yeah, I did tell you that, but that's within the last three weeks, not within the last two and a half years. I, for two years, I heard nothing. I heard you didn't nothing hear anything in the year. Excuse me. I I'm, I'm on now. I didn't. We didn't go to any meetings. We didn't go to any meetings in 2020. There was a pandemic going on. Right, and I understand that. I understand that the whole pandemic really has made this thing last longer. I mean, we would have really liked to have discussions long before this um, on ATVs. We we want to see it settled too, you know, and um, you know we don't want to see it drag on either. And and um, we certainly, I, I think right now, I'm certainly willing to watch that that recording. And if he does in fact say 2019, we can uh, make a motion on that. I, I don't have a problem with that. Uh, can I? 
can I take it? What you're saying right now, once you look at that YouTube meeting, and when you hear Mr. Towns, Mr. Towns say for the, the trial period for 2019, then that will invalidate temporary. That will invalidate that 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 trial period. In my eyes, anyway, I can't speak for the rest of my board, but that in my eyes, that would mean that it was only for 2019. I did uh, not know cool. it said that, and it did not say that in a minute because I've looked at them more than once. Yeah, that's true. Yes, I know. But and let us have a look at it. Certainly, we can do that. Does anyone so, else have some comments about this or anything else? Any community concerns? Um, Bob, this is Allison Lane. I was just going to say that you can hear Chris Town stating that that was for 2019 at the one hour and 10 minute mark. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Allison. Thank you. Bob, you've uh, told us how you feel. Uh, I'm wondering if the other members of the select board would answer the same question. The question being, if the recording of that meeting says that the select the trial period is for 2019, will you move to end the trial immediately? Could you could you identify yourself, please? Yes, this is Kevin Lane. I thought it was, but I just wanted to just for clarification, you know. Yep. And anybody that's speaking, please identify yourself before you speak. Thank you. How about you, Eric? How do you feel? So what I would say is it would need to be an agenda item for us to take action. So we couldn't make an action tonight. Right. We all, unless it was on our agenda, is that correct, Ben? That's correct. We so got to review it. It has to be an agenda item. So I don't, I want to make this very clear that if this comes up as an agenda item, it will be specific to the Silver Ridge Road, not any other proposal anywhere in town, no other road. This would be an agenda item to discuss just Silver Ridge Road. Because right. I don't want 100 people, that, 100 100 people out here thinking right. we're talking about the entire town or some ordinance. It would simply be to give us time to review the video and come back and discuss and, any, and all parties would have an opportunity to speak on the Silver Ridge Road part of this. Agreed. I just wanted that clear. So that's Eric. How about you, Gary? Well, no, oh, wait. A... That, the, the question was not answered. Assuming it's an agenda item and the recording corroborates the claim that the uh, trial period is for 2019, Eric, will you vote to revoke the trial? I will not vote or, or discuss my vote tonight about an item that's not on our agenda. I will, I, I'm, I'm shirking the answer. How's that? That's as honest as I can be. I think that when that agenda item comes up, there will be discussion both pro and con for the Silver Ridge Road usage, where the wording from the 2019 meeting, if it identifies that as was the trial period, that could end that trial period for sure. It does not mean that we wouldn't make a motion at that meeting to continue usage of Silver Ridge Road. And I'm not saying that's where I'm standing. I'm simply saying when we have an agenda item, we never really know what the motion is going to read until the meeting occurs and we've taken statements from all parties concerned. So I, I won't say that I'm gonna vote to discontinue the use of the road. I, I'm gonna say that I will wait until that evening, listen to all testimony and make a decision that evening. The testimony we're talking about is the, the statements that were made in a meeting. Uh, and your statement was that uh, the quality of life of the residents is more important than the quality of life of the ATV enthusiasts. I, I believe what Mr. Clodier quoted me as was, it's equally as important, and I would stand by that statement. Yes, the quality of life is, is important to the folks that live there as it is to the ATV users that want to use that stretch of road. I, I, I stand by that statement. I, I can't predict the testimony that we're going to receive at another meeting. Uh, I, I, I can't even predict what the motion would seem to be at that point. We may all agree that uh, specific to the two meeting in 2019, that it no longer applies. That doesn't mean a motion can't be presented, which would continue the authorized use of Silver Ridge Road. It simply brings the topic to an agenda and allows us to have open discussion. 
Uh, sir, the, the question is, if, if with no other agenda matters, that the, the proposal was for 2019, with no other agenda, would you vote to end the trial period? I, and I've stated I'm not going to answer the question because I don't know what, until we get to that meeting, I don't know what the motion will, will read. I can't. The motion is to end the trial period if there are no other motions. I understand that's your intent, sir. I'm saying that night we will probably hear from a lot more people, residents, non-residents, users of the road. Uh, there will be a lot of people here to discuss that. So I don't know what the end result will be of that discussion. I don't know what the motion will sound like. So uh, it brings the topic to the forefront. What I'm saying is we will have the opportunity to discuss this in an open meeting. So I appreciate very much that you've brought this to us. It will help us to resolve this issue on that stretch of road. Uh, yeah, the only comment I have is I've, I've stated several times before to uh, all concerned uh, that I will just take part in this discussion for institutional knowledge. <clears throat> Excuse me, institutional knowledge because I've been appointed liaison uh, from the select board to the ATV community and I have stated before and I will state again that I will recuse myself from any vote that's going to take place on this subject. Thanks, Gary. How about you, Judy? Can you hear me? There's an echo, though. You've got a somebody's got a mute. Yeah, that's a, okay. Can, can you, you hear me now? now? Uh, you're you're echoey. Can you hear me now? now? A little, yeah. Give it a try. Okay. Let me try one more. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Is that better? That's better. Sorry. That's all right. I, I have to agree with Eric. I know if I re recall, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do with this. Let me try that. Does that work? work? Go ahead, Judy. We lost Judy. <laughs> Brian, how about you? I agree with Eric. Um, I need think we need to have it on the next meeting. Um, that way, the it be on the agenda so other people can come and say and talk. Um, I have no answer tonight. Uh, I want to hear what how it was said. Uh, my thoughts were when that happened, when I voted for it, was a trial period. For 2019 means if we didn't hear anything at the end of that, that it continues. I don't think that when we put enough time into this ATV thing, then more than anything we do it lately. And um, my thoughts is if we get it put through, it should go until it stops. Somebody comes in and votes, they want to get rid of it or something. So that's my thoughts. I won't give an answer tonight. I'll wait till the next meeting. Thanks, hey, Brian. Well, Judy. Well, can you hear me now? Yes, much better. Okay, that's better. And um, I, I agree with both Eric and Brian. I remember us that we were going to be doing um, a review of this after maybe six months or, um, or, you know, during the season, and then COVID hit, and that just messed everything up. But I, I agree that we need to look at the data that we have to uh, search through to come back to make a good decision on this yes well i just want to add one more comment if um if in fact it was only for 2019 then in my eyes it's, it's going to be expired it's an expired use but i have actually reached out to people that live on silver ridge road and there's many different opinions about it there's um i've talked to quite a few people trying to to get um, both sides and um and actually one of them is your neighbor on skyview acres and he says he hears them, but um, the sounds the ATV, ATVs make is a very distinctive sound, but it's not necessarily louder. He's got a Harley and it's loud, 
I've got a Harley that's loud. It's not that it's really loud, and it's more that that distinctive rumble of the tires and everything that goes with it. It's, it's a sound that catches your ear, and that's why you pay attention to it. And it's also a sound you're not used to hearing or you, or you weren't previous to, you, to that. And I, I can attest to that right now. This week, I've had a four-wheeler go by my house several times, and um, I know he's not registered and he's not whatever, and, but it, you do pick it up. I'm sitting on my porch, you know, having a cocktail, and I hear this rumbling of tires come fly, come through, and I can hear it from the town farm, and I hear it all the way to Fitzgerald Road, and um, you hear it. It's distinctive, but it, it's not like loud in decibels, you know. I, I don't think there's many motor vehicles that are louder than a Harley, like my Harley pipes are, and they're, they're factory. But um, it's not saying it's not a disturbance, but it, that's just my observation. And um, But uh, I do want to set it right. If we only made it for 2019, then in my eyes, I feel like it's expired. But I also agree with Eric. He could, um, we could very well talk about it. Now I'm talking about just Silver Ridge Road and, and continue it. Because when we, our intent was, no matter what it says, or what Chris said, my intent was that we we have the trial period, we wait until we gather feedback from anybody, and which we got none. We we got none for two years. And I know we're getting plenty now over the past month and a half or two months. All of a sudden it's crazy. Believe me, I know. I get texts, I get emails, I get calls. I've had three people show up on my driveway and bang on my door. We're getting it now. And um you know, we're going to discuss it and we're going to have it be a very thorough discussion, but um, that, that's all uh, we can do. We can't make any motion on it tonight because it wasn't on the agenda. The best we can do is put that on the next agenda and um, for a topic to discuss. So does anyone else have any comments or input? I guess, I Bob, I do. This, is, this is Don McDowell um, talking. Yeah. And first of all, I just wanted to, you know, say thank you for all your offerings to have a public informational meeting. My questions are about that meeting in regards to all, all this ATV, um, in regards to the ATV issue. First of all, is this going to be an informational meeting for residents to have a conversation about this, or? is the plan for the select board to invite non-residents to speak as well. So that's my first question, that's rather simple. The second question is, will the board, is the board planning to present a proposal to be discussed at that meeting? Or rather, will it be more of an open discussion just about ATVs in general? To answer your first question, I. I've actually thought of that quite a bit, and I, I do feel like um, some of our neighbors, like John, the town of Johnson, I've been in talk with uh, the chair down there, Eric Osgood, about ATVs. They've recently adopted allowing ATVs. I do think they've got some good feedback to add. Um, also, the town of Hyde Park, I was talking to Susan Bartlett about it as well. Um, and um, I think there's a lot that we could gain by asking other people than just town residents. Um, if it were to come to a vote, obviously it'd be just town residents. But um, within reason, I'm inclined to, to let people from other towns speak. Um, I'm not talking about out-of-staters from Massachusetts and Maine that want to come up and tear up and down our roads. I'm talking about people that live right here in our community, our extended community. So that's, that's my opinion on that. And for the second question, we really haven't put together um, an agenda or or designed a forum for this meeting that's gonna happen. We will be doing that. And my guess is we would have the have a conversation, a discussion, and then we might go back from that and there might be a a proposal formed from it. Um, I doubt that it would be be formed before the meeting. So and, and this isn't something that's gonna be a one time deal. I thought, you know, we all see that it's a very contentious issue and it could take a while to get through it, you know, and I'm hoping we can do it soon. Like I know I've posted everywhere that um, until the governor allows us to do it and meet, you know, meet in numbers, uh, we can't do it. But um, as soon as we can, we're very happy to have to have everybody that, that wants to voice their opinion, they can do it. So you know, I hope that answers your questions. 
Yeah, that does, that does answer my questions. And I guess I would just, just to follow up on that, I'd just say, you know, we all want to have this informational meeting. I think it's really, really important that the people of Morristown get the chance to speak. I would hate to think that the meeting would be dominated by speakers from other towns. And um, I would also hope that there would be, you know, some kind of some kind of specificity to the conversation rather than just a wide open conversation about ETVs. Agreed. But thank, but thank you very much. Thank you. I, I have one last question too, again, on this uh, temporary trial, but if, it, when you read that it's 2019, my problem again is, is we're gonna have this meeting concern the use of the roads for, for ATVs. Why not uh, include Civil Ridge Road in on that meeting rather than continue with this trial for us? And and that's, uh, and my wife, by the way, just before the, the 520 meeting, she did call Erica and she did send you a, a letter. So, I mean, we have complained and I don't know if any, obviously nobody has heard it, but but we have. And, uh, and my problem is continual trial for Civil Ridge Road is unnecessary if you're gonna have this meeting coming up and it's, it as soon as the governor allows it for COVID to discuss all the roads. And I guess that ends it just about, I have to say. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. So what, what we're trying to do is to deal with this, this specific area right now for rather the next meeting, rather than wait, because it could be two months before we're allowed to do it. I'm, I'm hoping not. I'm hoping it's going to be, you know, May 1st. I know that's optimistic, but um, it's going to happen soon. Any other comments? You're going to give up. All right. Is there any other community concerns? I know about Bob. Buckwheat College. Buckwheat. Buckwheat, how are you? Wow. I'm doing fine. I miss seeing you in here. I, I, got a, I, I just got a concern. I was reading the paper the other day, uh, the police report, and I, I find it pretty ironic something to go on beside what they did. And this, the, if, if an accident waiting to happen, when this, this feller, I don't know who he was, and they didn't put the names in, but they tried to coerce a woman to get in his car. And the cops came and just didn't do anything. Now, this is, this is, an, this is an accident waiting to happen. Why, why wasn't he, why wasn't this fellow detained and, and, and uh, talking to? I didn't, I don't know about that. Richard's right here. <laughs> it was right in the, it was in the news of citizens. It was that, the news is of local, that is a local resident, and we have been working with him repeatedly for quite some time, and he is no threat. No, it's just the way it was written, the way it was written up in the paper. It sounded kind of funny. Right. You all want the paper right. So, well, right it, it was it wasn't a, it wasn't a straightforward answer for us. I was just concerned um, oh, because I knew something could have happened, and we, if you could have worded it the same right. way, that's all. All right. Yeah. Thanks, Buckwheat. Is there anything else? I I have other concerns, but I want to make sure I'm in person when we do them, Bill. Okay. All right. Thanks, Buckwheat. Oh. All right. We'll move on to liquor control. Make a motion we enter the Board of Liquor Control. I have a motion by Eric. Second. And a second by Gary. Um, all in favor say aye by roll call, Judy. Aye. Brian. Aye. Gary. Aye. Eric. Aye. We are now in the Board of Liquor Control. Sarah. She's She's can you hear me? Yeah, I can you hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, you. Go ahead. Okay, um, I do have a couple renewals. Yep, I read them. Um, you have them in front of you? Yeah. Good question about the Green Mountain Distillers. It says NA for liquor class, so I'm not sure what we're doing. So they just um, get a outside consumption permit. Oh, okay. 
All right, Richard, do you know about these? I know about no issues. No issues. Make a motion that we approve the renewals for the four businesses listed. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. Is there any further discussion on this? Could you read the four businesses, please? Yes. It's Mc Sharon McLaughlin, um, CK, the 10th hole, the golf course, uh, 1013 LLC, that's Mook's place, Rockheart Brewery LLC, and Green Mount Distillers LLC. Thank you. All in favor, Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I might as well. Motion is unanimous. Do I hear a motion to come out? I have a motion to come out of control and a second by second. Gary? All in favor by roll call, Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. We are now out of the Board of Liquor Control. Next, we're going into new business. First one is sell the ambulance at Morristown Rescue. Bill? I'll start, I'll start this off and I'll chime in after that. Um, we've had an ambulance set in the old day one. Yes. Um, we've set that out for probably about a year and a half at least. Um, it's not inspectable, it's one that we don't use anymore. We've tried to sell it, we haven't had any buyers, we haven't been able to give it to the um, This gentleman lives up Brian Pond Road and his son that's infatuated with ambulances and he wants to take the ambulance, take the body off of it and, and use it for his son. Yeah. Um, we have no use of it. He's going to come get it. He knows it's not spectral. He knows he needs to haul it off, do whatever he wants with it. But we, we've been trying to get rid of this thing for a long time. Tina's been bugging me once a month to get rid of it. So it's off our fixed assets. It's up to the board from there. Okay. I think it's wonderful. I guess are we going to get him in trouble with the zoning administrator? Right. Have an apartment I, 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 I don't want to. I, I don't know how to. Less than a 500 square foot addition. So. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm going to think he's going to take the body off. So. It's going to be a playhouse. Yeah. Okay. Could be a tiny home. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's different. Yeah, that would be different. That'd be different. That'd be different. It'd be a playhouse. Do I hear a motion regarding this? What's the gentleman's name? Uh, I make a motion that we give the uh, ambulance, the former A1, to Tim Callahan and his family for use as whatever they are. An ambulance playhouse. An ambulance playhouse. Okay. I have a motion by Eric. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. Is there any further discussion on this? Do we have to do anything? To decommission it, like take any of the names of the town off or anything like that? It's all off. Since the day we decommissioned it. We just need to sign the title over. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye by roll call, Judy. Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I might as well. Motion is unanimous. All right. So next, the, the agenda should say donate instead of sell. Donate. donate. Yeah. Let's uh let's do the appoint the the uh, MCC. Do that. That was added. That's that uh, Kristen Connor. Is that my motion? Yes. All right. Reappoint. All right, I move to reappoint Kristen Connolly to the Morristown Conservation Commission. Uh, and that it reflects that her membership has been continuous. Great. I have a motion on that. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. Is there any further discussion on this? For your, your term. For your, your, your term. All in favor say aye by roll call, Judy. Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I as well. Motion is unanimous. All right. Next, number two, Village Center Apartments Project Resolution. You have that, Dan, right? Center packet. Yeah. 
Um, yes, it is. And I think Tim Olinsky on the uh, call to, to discuss that. Oh, Jim, welcome. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for having us and reconsidering this again. Or actually, what we need is not a reconsideration, but just an update of um, of the actual uh, resolution so that the um, agency can have the uh, correct paperwork to move forward. Yeah, we've approved this a couple times now, right? This is number three. You have. And they've been uh, good enough to, to just say we need a um, simple updated resolution and we can move forward. Uh, we'll be going to their board meeting beginning of June. Okay. This, this is so that they can apply to for community development block grant funds. All community development block grant funds go through the town of the state. So in this particular case, you know, we did the same thing for Arthur, I think. Um, the the Moyle View, the, the library, all those funds pass through the town in the state of Vermont. Um, this is, they've, they've done it before, but this is really a continuation. Once again, it's so that they can apply for the community development block grant funds for this project. Okay. Do you have any other comments, Jim? Uh, other than thanking you for your support? No. We're, okay. we're ready. We're, we're pretty much ready to go. Um, as soon as we have a couple of details finished up, we'll be ready to start this summer. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Do I have a motion on this? I hope that we continue our support for the Village Center apartment project. Okay. And approve the resolution. Yep. Okay. VCDP grant application. Authority. Yes. All of that is in my mind. <laughs> that was in your motion. Yeah. Okay. We've got it. As presented to us in front of us. All right, I have a motion by Eric. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion? All in favor by roll call, Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I'm I as well. The motion is unanimous. And signed. Next, discuss. Thank you so much. Yes, thanks, Jim. Thanks for joining us tonight. My pleasure. Discuss the purchase of new fire truck, Denny. Yeah. Come right up. Come right up to the hot seat. I'll turn the camera on you. Yeah, I'm sure you got the top paper. Yeah. Basically, we missed one of the trucks. And the one we got right now is, let's say, 40000 over what we have for our one cent. The truck is 240000 We have 204000 So, in order to order this truck, I got to would you guys see if we could come up with the extra money? Yeah, $34,587. Right, Tina? Sure. Well, just to clarify, we wouldn't have the full amount until July 1st. So, you know, the, the one penny that kicks in that voters approved, we wouldn't have all the money until July 1st. Until July 1. And even when you do have all the money, you're still $34,500 less than what you need. Then we would have had. And the reason it's gone up is, like I said, we missed the first truck. We have a chassis on hold right now with our name on it from last year's prices. Yeah. And basically, for us to keep it, we got to fill this up. Yeah. It's more than just the cover page. Right. And with that said, within 10 days, of them getting this, they need to get a check for $100,793, which covers the check. Right, we have that anyway, right? Yes, we do. So 
So what about the balance, the funds that needed? Will be due upon completion of the truck. And they know we can't accept that truck until at least July 1st okay. or after. Yeah. But we're still, we still need 34,000 even after July 1, right? Yeah. So where are we getting that money? That's what I'm here to ask. All right. That's what I thought. <coughs> because it's no. all downhill from here. Yeah. Because we picked up our engine down there. The way everything's held up right now, we couldn't get a gap in chassis right now for over a year. Because they're having problems getting parts. Is this a 2021 or 2022? It's 2021. 2020. It's a 2019 price, correct? Okay. So, Dan. The only place it comes from right now for next fiscal year will be from the undesignated reserves. Right. Um, that's the only place it can come from. Any comments from the board? Any? I, I, I just speak in favor. At this point, we have. A vital firefighting piece of equipment that has got to service because of a bulge in the poly tank. We're relying on our neighbors and mutual uh, mutual aid uh, for water hauling to a certain extent. Uh, this is a, a more stone issue. It's our truck, and it's unfortunate that we missed the other truck, but we missed it. I mean, we we weren't able to commit to it in time, and they they sold it. To uh, if we don't more town meeting yeah like a month or two right now yeah. so at this point if we don't my understanding is the next available truck would be over a year before they can get this kind of chassis and more money and sure. more and longer and further out towards delivery so ten percent a year easy by the way, with some of the effects of COVID, it's going to be more than that with everything. Yeah. The price of everything going up. Might be. This is not a. This is not a, An issue where the fire department is at fault or any negligence on their part. They are reacting. Uh, a truck has been put out of commission for safety reasons, and this this needs it needs to go through. It needs to pass. We need that other water truck. The other tanker. And this one's going to be a 2,000 gallon stainless steel tank, not a poly tank. The size will be made out of poly, not steel or aluminum. But it also gets us back that if we have a resident, we have a dry year. We had our other stainless steel tank, we're able to do wells. So we get our water right from the hydrant and the environment. With a stainless steel tank, we're able to go and pour around the well. The people in well truck. Does this this truck come to the warranty? This truck is the identical cap and chassis as what we got right now for W two. Yeah. Okay. It's a freight liner. Yeah. It's W two. We haven't had no issues with it, and we've had little things, but they're taken care of. And how long is that? The last, you think you're hoping 20, 25 years. That's how we kind of build a truck, right? It's investment, then. I mean, once over 10 years, it loses any kind of real value. You know, if we were in a position to trade and get rid of them every 10 years, you could get half your value back. Yeah. But we're not in that position, right? But we don't want to be really, we just we want to help the truck to use. We, we want to be able to use. And the hard part is like what I'll touch on what Eric says, like when we're called for an engine at man a tanker engine manpower, we go. That means we have somebody come to our station because we don't have the second. Right. It's a river. Yeah, it's mutual aid, which is good. I mean, it's great to have. It's very minimal cost a year. Yeah. So how do we sit with our unallocated reserves? <coughs> Tina. I think um, I'm trying to think. I think we have 500,000. Yeah. And looking at the last town meeting. Yeah. Right. And this is this is the comparison. I think you hear different things from different officers on what the unallocated reserve should be. Right. Um, we have one officer I think told us 10%. Yeah, one told.
told us 20 percent. Yeah. One told us 20 percent, which I think is unrealistic. It's unrealistic for um, you know, and, and so right now our annual budget, quite frankly, is seven million. So 10 percent of that is about 700,000. Yeah. We've been working up. You know, we have little setbacks every now and then, which is normal. Um, but overall, you know, you're you're looking at your eight nine eight percent probably right now when you're on allocated reserves. Yeah. We we have no idea how we did on this fiscal year yet. You know, it's it's too early to tell. We really won't know that until we audit. Um, you know, we we are starting to see some money come back in from FEMA, which was a big help to get it back up quite you know where it needs to be. So so overall, you're all right. You know, you're not great. You're not terrible. I mean, you're you're kind of I say you're kind of right in the middle for most towns in, in the state of Vermont. Right. You're, it's not where you'd like it to be, but it's hard to get it to that 10 percent number. But if we pull 34,000 from it for this, it's not going to hurt us too bad. No more and it's too bad. not something we can push off. We gotta, we gotta do it. Gary, you have a comment about? It? I agree. I mean, because the way prices are, I mean, you, you go out and price most anything now, it's gone up like 20 to 25 to 30 percent. Yeah. On, Every on building materials and and I know I was just reading an article the other day that anything to do with plastic or is that those uh, chemical factories down in Texas, yeah. they said it, it may be as much as two to three months before they're back online again. And I know I so if you've got a chance to pick up something, just order my four by eight sheet at the home center. Yeah. Of plastic, <laughs> it's gone up to almost 240 bucks from 160 something. Yeah. If they can get it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Two by four by eight is eight bucks. Right? Yeah. Tax included. Right. <laughs> it used to be three or four bucks. Yeah. No. Yeah. But no, I my opinion would be to go ahead as long as their reserves are Easy such reserves. that we can do it. How about you, Judy? I think also with the amount of building that's going on in the community, we have to be aware of um safety issues and be prepared for all of that. Yeah. Point. That's a good point. How about you, Brian? I agree. Um, I think we got a great fire department. We always have. If they need things, I think if there's any way we can do it, we need to do it. Um, having that is safety for them. So I'm right behind you. I think okay. we need, but. All right, do we need a motion for this? Um, I would say um, authorized to purchase a, a new tanker. Um, and then you should give them the. I have the total amount. To this total right here. So the Lexus Fire Equipment Truck, is that what we're talking about? Yeah. Well, that's who's doing That's where the gap in chassis is. Uh, basically, you're agreeing to buy a tanker. Yeah. So with the dollar figure we have in front of us, Dennis, $239,120. Yeah. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. That's, that's the total. That's the total that I've got now. That they're waiting for this paper to be signed. Okay. So the trucks hasn't gone nowhere unless I call the plan and say hey, no. Okay. Or I say yeah, the paper is going to be signed and sent to you. But, but you're telling this dollar figure I just read to you is the total cost. Of That's the total cost for that truck to come down to our station. Okay. I make a motion. Well, Brian, you want to make that motion? Sure. I'll make I'll make a motion that we allow them to buy a tanker for the fire department for two hundred and thirty nine thousand one hundred and twenty dollars. Thanks, Brian. I have a motion by Brian. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Judy. Is there any further discussion on this? Brian, that would be allowing Dan to sign off. Am I correct? What's that again? That would be allowing Dan to, to be the signature authority on that. Sure. I thought that's what you meant. Yes. And this, uh, I just also want to note that this is we're also going to be using thirty-four thousand five hundred eighty-seven thousand and forty-three cents from our un unallocated funds. Sure. All right. All in favor by roll call, Judy. Yes. Brian. Yes. Gary. Aye. Eric. Aye. I might as well. Motion is passed unanimously. Thanks, Danny. Thank you. Next, Bill. 
hire permanent part-time EMS employee. Welcome, sir. That's good. So um, this was the previously approved permanent part-time position, I believe, from uh, late December, early January. Yes, that's right. That has gone on fill uh, when we uh, set out to fill the part uh, the full-time position opened by Diana's resignation. We advertised both positions. Um, I'm happy to tell you that uh, we've got nine, nine resumes in four days for the two positions. Uh, while other agencies seem to be struggling in finding, uh, finding staff, uh, that was not an issue for us. We did interview all nine people. Um, for the part-time position, uh, our recommendation is to bring on Zach Lakey. He's a nationally registered Vermont licensed advanced EMT. Uh, most recently working uh, at uh, Linden Rescue and 45th Parallel EMS in New Hampshire. Uh, he's currently enrolled in the New Hampshire Technical Paramedic Program with a graduation of early next year. Uh, we would like to bring him into that 23-hour a week position, unbenefited at 16.65 an hour. Okay, now we have, we've got four motions here. Do you want to talk about uh, the three? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we'll make okay. We'll make them one at a time. Go ahead, Eric. Judy, do you want to do that motion? The part-time, permanent part-time. I will. I move that we hire Zach Legay as a permanent part-time EMS employee, working no more than 23 hours a week, with no benefits at a rate of $16.65 per hour. Thanks, Judy. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Second by Eric. Sorry, Brian. That's okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye by roll call. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I as well. Next, this uh, I move. Go ahead. Do you want to do that, Judy? The second motion? Yes, I move to remove Christopher Clement from our volunteer EMS roster. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Gary. <clears throat> Is there any further discussion? Do you have a comment on that, Bill? No, sir. Okay. That's a, that's a housekeeping issue before we get to the Okay. Okay. Um, all in favor by roll call, Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. Am I as well? Motion is passed. Okay, this, do you talk about Holly? Uh, no, I have not. Um, Go ahead. Uh, we're requesting to add uh, Holly McKinney to our volunteer roster. She's a nationally registered Vermont licensed emergency medical technician, uh, currently employed by Copley Hospital, moving into uh, Morristown here in the very near future. And she would like to come on to uh, Morris County and as a volunteer member. That's great. Do I hear a motion, Judy? Yes, I move to add Holly Nugent to our volunteer EMS roster. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor by roll call, Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I'm I as well. Motion is unanimous. Do you want to talk about this one, Bill, the last one? Sure. Um, for the permanent full-time EMS paramedic position uh, made open by Dana Osborne's resignation, um, after uh, interviewing, uh, we've, uh, we've asked um, that uh, you approve Christopher Clement uh, into that position. He is a nationally registered Vermont licensed Paramedic. He's been a volunteer member of the squad since 2007. He took a break from college. Uh, he passed the squad in 2016. Uh, he's been an anchor on our Sunday night shifts. He's been employed full time at Alex and St. John Ferry. So he's got, uh, uh, in addition to being coming up on a, a three year paramedic, uh, he's also got some uh, some good experience uh, from working uh, full time at a uh, uh, Additionally, just uh, just as of Friday, uh, Christopher received his flight paramedic certification, so he's also uh, able to operate at the critical care level. That's great. Uh, 
So uh, Chris, uh, Chris is excited to be on. He's a Morristown resident, uh, lives a minute from our building. Um, uh, we look forward to having him on board. We'd like to bring him in uh, at a um, grade four, step nine, 2076 an hour in recognition of his uh, certifications, his experience, his length of service with the squad, uh, and his uh, bachelor's degree. Sounds good. Do I hear a motion regarding this? I move that we hire Christopher Clement for the position of permanent full-time EMS paramedic at grade four, step nine, at a rate of $20.76 per hour. Great. I have a motion by Judy. Do I have a second? Second. Rush. Second by Eric. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor by roll call. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. And I might as well. Motion is unanimous. Anything else, Bill? No, sir. Thank you for your the feedback emails you give us, you know, the call logs. I really like I read all that stuff. And um, I appreciate that. That's great. Thank you. Uh, it's measuring, no, right? Yeah. It's, so, it's great. Measuring what you're doing, you know what you know. What yeah. On, so. Well, it's really nice because, you know, as you know, I ran on Morristown for 35 years and we didn't have that. We didn't have that for a long, long, long time. And, I, and I'm not blaming anybody, but it's just really nice to have all that feedback and you, you have a sense of knowing what's going on when you when you get that kind of stuff. It's great. I'm so. pleased to see the, the addition of the volunteer staff too. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's tough. To, you know, we're, in a, we're in a tough situation. Our community is at a size and call volume where it would be nice to be full time. I don't think the taxpayers can afford that just yet. So we need that mix, and it's tough to find volunteers. Uh, but I appreciate your efforts in, in doing so. Especially right now, there's uh, we're we're really squeezed with education and training. Yep. Um, the state's been pushing out a online EMT program that's originating out of Bennington. Yeah. Uh, that a lot of people are getting into statewide, but just our our local homegrown education has just been just been just sidelined for over a year now. So. Uh, I'm looking forward to being able to get some of that back up. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you. All right. We'll move number seven, Morristown summer camp can cancellation. So I'll be on this too. Um, of course, last summer we had to cancel the summer camp because we didn't have a location to have it. And I think we probably would have staff and um, I think we're in the same situation again this year. The school is already, but we won't have a place to have the summer camp again. Um, so, and you know, I know Sarah's already given a lot of parents that are asking her if we're going to be able to have it again. Um, but right now, I think we're, we're still in the same situation that we were last year. I don't think we have an answer, or, and I think it's going to be awful hard to, to do the summer camp with our normal staff. And we don't necessarily have a belt there to help us run. Um, yeah, I. I'm not necessarily in favor of canceling the program because I think it's a huge service our community needs. But that being said, I know the school has written um, to Christy, our volunteer um, summer camp director, and said that um, we can't use the school space. So in order to attempt to have a program that's gonna it's going to take a lot of work, and I'm not sure who who can take it on and who can tackle it. I, I don't like either. I don't like either side of the scenario. So do we have to make a motion on this? Well, you have to decide. You know, if you're going to cancel it, I think we need to cancel it now. Do we have any time to work with it, or it's not going to change much? Anything well, we have time, but we need to, if we're not going to cancel it, we need to know who is going to work on it. Was this, wasn't this letter written before the governor's last announcement that allowing uh, I think that certain it, activities? That, um, I don't I don't want to get quoted if I'm understanding the situation wrong, but my understanding is the school has said no, not due to COVID reasons, but because they're redoing the gym floor. 
and so they're doing maintenance for the the building and that that it's because of that, it's not because of COVID. But I could be wrong. Well, according to this letter, it says uh, with COVID still running rampant throughout Vermont, without all adults being vaccinated, we're not accepting any outside groups inside of our facilities, nor is there any official use of our school ground. But there may be, I, I'm wrong now. There might be something, I mean, that might be a, a case as well. Right, that might be an additional detail right. about but it. But they didn't. Uh, well, either way, it can't happen, it sounds like. Apparently not. Yeah. So what are we going to do? Don't pay enough school taxes. Is there anything we need to do? Take action? Well, I agree, sir. I mean, it's, it's been a great program, but I don't yeah. know how to make it happen in the summer. I mean, is there anything we can advertise? I mean, we, you know, it's nothing we can do, really. Hey, Bob? Yeah. Very quick. Is there any way we can postpone this? I mean, is there a little while and maybe find a different place to, even if we didn't do the whole program, I, I don't know. Maybe there's nobody to even do it. I just, I just hate to cancel it and then find out there's people out there that really want to push to, to do it. If it's just the gym floor, I mean, they got how many gyms up there? Of course, they're they're saying they're not going to let us on the grounds by the sound. So, right. but I, I just that's just an idea of maybe postponing right. and check it out, or do we want to just give it up? Can I ask a question? Is this program managed by a paid staffer? This is completely volunteer. So I'm going to go off on a rabbit hole here and just say that next year in budget time, I think it's prudent for us to look at this. A little tougher, and, and and see if we shouldn't uh, fund it, fund us in some means. I mean, that's a whole summer program for that many kids, and it's not just Morristown kids. There's kids from other communities that come in because it's been a great program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of work, and it takes more than one. So I'm just going to put that bug in everybody's ear that perhaps in the fall we could be thinking about that. When we're I think that's that's, uh, that's part of the issue right here. So it. Oh, like it's set up and it's coordinated, it's run by a bunch of volunteers. So we can um, give more time, but I'm not sure if the volunteers are, if that's going to help or not. Right. Uh, and then the volunteers, what they do is they hire a director and students to run the program. Mm -hmm. That And those, the director that is the on site person is the volunteer but the oversight committee is a volunteer. group of volunteers right okay. yeah uh, i understand that yeah. and we did help them like their kids you know tended to either for free or for half price or right. something along those lines so i mean there was some benefit but it, it's been one of those programs that you know while we've been lucky we've always had volunteers that have stepped up to keep it running but they always saw it sounds like it's just another program that we have to lose because of covid again you know and a lot of the other programs, like Stowe, is, Stowe was able to run theirs last year, and they're running it this year um, because they have paid full-time staff that work for the town that right. organize it and run the program. And some records go down there. I know that. Yeah, Eric, I like your thinking, and we also might want to think about um, if we have to rent tents to make this happen. If we can't do it this year, maybe next year. Right. Okay. Do do you want to do you want to take action tonight, or just work on it a little more? We can go back and work on it more um, and see if we can come up with something different. I know my good at I mean, I don't know where we're at. Or, yeah. Right. Uh, obviously, it's not something the staff here has time to do. Yeah. So, um, table it for right now. And... Are you in communication with the volunteer board? Uh, Christy. You know, are, are they saying they've given up? I don't want to go on record for. I agree. Right. I'm not asking the same question. I guess we talked to them. If we're going to kick the can down the road, yeah. We just oh. want to make sure that if, if this hasn't already been decided by the volunteer group, that we just don't have uh, whatever time, energy, and location. 
I think that they're, what they've expressed to me is that they're nervous about not having a location and they're nervous about um, teenage staff during COVID. Okay, right. Okay. Valid concern. And the other thing too is we're <clears throat> we're already getting or Sarah's probably getting more phone calls. I've got a few. You know, people are looking. So here there's people are looking for something now. Um, and right. if they don't have it or if we don't have it, I think they're looking for some sort of you know, specific parents. If the parents are looking, where's my child from? And how they can do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I seen a paper the other day that Waterbury was looking for people to, to run their yeah. Yeah, rec program for the summer. Up the chair, stuff, all these different things there. Well, we don't have to act on it tonight. No, but we'll, we don't have to. Act give it some more thought. We'll, we'll reach out maybe. Yeah, we'll be, yeah. I was hoping somebody from their committee might be here. It'd be nice to have somebody that we could talk to. to speak. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll do that then. <clears throat> Next, appoint agent to convey real estate. Um, we're finally, top of town, there's an email here. We're ready to close on the village garage. Um, the select board uh, needs to appoint an agent to convey real estate for this particular transaction. Um, I recommend the board follow your time to do it. Yep, this week, it's your point to do it. I can do it. Uh, I make a motion that we appoint Bob as his representative to sign to convey real estate for the uh, sale of the village garage, former village garage. Second. I have a motion and a second. Boy, that was quick, Judy. Is there any more discussion on this? All in favor by roll call. Judy? Aye. Brian? Aye. Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. Motion is passed. Next, engine replacement on the grader. I think Kevin is online or on the phone. Yes, I am here. Hi, Kevin. Good evening. Tell us what's going on. Well, the uh, older of my graders, the John Deere 770, um, she's right up around 11,000 hours on the wow. engine. Yeah. Um, I know about 3,500 hours ago, the transmission was changed. Yes, it was. Um, so, uh, as you can see by the estimates that you have in front of you, um, one is obviously a little bit better than the other. Um, it's definitely a machine worth keeping, I believe. It's uh, pre-admissions, um, so it doesn't have all the DEF and, and regenerated catalytic converter stuff on it. Right. Now, um, are these apples uh, to apples, uh, these quotes? Uh, pretty close. Uh, I think uh, Nortrax was expecting they were going to have to change the injector pump and all that with remand stuff. Yeah. Um, and and uh, Rick was not. He was thinking that what he, because he came in and actually looked the grader over and said he could reuse what was on it. Okay. Kevin, I'm a little confused on Rick's estimate here because I, I don't want to misread what he's got for his numbers. Can you tell me what his bid is? So his total bid is seventeen thousand eighty-eight dollars and eighty-seven cents. And then, if with the core charge, would be a minus of twenty-five hundred dollars from that. But so the estimate is still at seventeen eight eighty-eight eighty-seven. So I think the way to read this. Rick is getting his new engine from Harvest, is that correct? Right. Yes. So this is this is the, the new engine from Harvest that Rick is buying, and this is the labor to install that engine. Yep. Correct, sorry. John yep. here. Would we be contracting with Rick for the whole thing, or would we be buying it from Rick, paying Rick for his 
We would be contracting with Rick to get the whole thing. For 17, 8, 88, 87, correct? For $17,088.87, yes. And that has, comes with warranty, right? Yes, on the on the block itself, on the remake. Right. Yeah, I just talked to my brother about this. So he's the one selling it. It's a huge difference in price. Yeah, it is a big difference. Uh, is that's why I I apples to apples. Am I, am I missing Wait. something? I don't see any seventeen thousand dollars listed on either of these three papers. Well, no, the seventeen thousand dollars would be the combination of Rick's labor cost and the parts the material cost. Right. So to combine them two together, it comes out to seventeen thousand eighty-eight dollars and eighty-seven cents. Yeah, if you had the, the yeah the thirty-two hundred from Rick, and with the thirteen eight eighty-eight eighty-seven duty, then you get that. Okay. And then, then you get that bottom number that's kind of cut off with a core. And that's how you come up to that final number. Okay, you thank you. See that? Kevin, is, it, is the, the, I mean, this is a significant difference in cost. Do uh, you think that's all because of the injectors? If you, look, just at, if you look just at the labor cost, Eric, um, yeah. Yeah. Nortrax is charging about twelve thousand dollars, and Rick is at thirty-two hundred. That's crazy. Yeah, they've got a lot more overhead than Rick is here. So, well, and correct. Rick's done a lot of work on our equipment too. Rick's, Rick is very. Oh, he's really good. Rick is really good. Rick really good. good. I know my brother highly recommends him. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, when is this? When is this grader scheduled for uh, uh, replacement? On our capital replacement schedule. It's actually coming up fairly soon within the next couple of years but I think with it with this motor job we could push it out to about five years okay is it giving you problems or is it just a yeah it's starting to act up right now that's why we had Rick come in and take a look at it but he, he feels we can get it through our mud season and our first initial grading and get some chloride on the roads and then he'll probably about mid June. He figures he'll be ready to. It is when we can take it down, take it out of service, and he'll get it back to us probably mid July. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, just doesn't seem like a lot of hours though. So. It's eleven thousand. Yeah. Hard hours. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah, All the, yeah that's what they're made for. But. Yeah. Well, you know, you can buy. The other thing about this particular grader is it's pre-emissions too. Right. So mm. that has a lot of value to it all, all by itself. Absolutely. Oh yeah. What year is it, Kevin? Uh, 2006, I believe. Maybe no, 2002. Sorry. Okay. All right. Do I hear a motion regarding this? I move that we uh, accept Rick LeVillier's bid, total of parts and labor uh, for replacing the engine in our grader at $17,088.87. Second. Motion by Eric and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? Just a question. The core charge, will that come back to our credit? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if the car is good, you get a twenty-five hundred dollar credit. Yeah. Okay. All right. All in favor, say aye by roll call. Judy. Aye. Brian. Aye. Gary. Aye. Eric. Aye. My my as well. The motion is passed unanimously. Thanks, Kevin. Well, thank you all. How are the roads doing, Kevin? A lot better than last year. Yeah. Yes, they are. I think uh, I'd the like to take was... credit. I'd like to take credit for it, but I'm going to have to say it's nature. Yes, I know. You never know what you're going to get. She felt bad for the way she treated you last year, Kevin. Well, she she definitely broke me in hard. That's for sure. Yeah, she did. Yeah. 
I noticed in the uh, in the warrants, Kevin, we bought a lot of gravel from uh, Salvis. Yes, we did. Is that stockpile gravel, or is that being used on the the uh, mud season? Uh, both. Right now, I've got about I'm sitting on about 600 yards right now of that that's still in stockpile, and then we put the other 1,100 yards on the roads. Okay, I I bring that up in open meeting just because we're having to buy gravel while we own a gravel pit. And it's part of our Act 250 uh, process. And once we hopefully get our permit, we won't have that expense come back on us again. But it remains to be right. seen. All right. Thanks, Kevin. Kevin, Thank I'm you. just curious. What's that gravel costing us? Uh, about twelve fifty a yard. So and so much, I think the, the bill I just brought in was over $22,000. All right. Good. Thank you. That's crushed gravel, I assume. Yes, that's crushed gravel. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Next, to prove the warrants. Bob, we, we missed something, Bob. What do we miss? In the road name? No, we, I don't know if you heard, but we're pushing that off tonight because they're still deliberating about it. Oh, I guess I missed that. Yeah, that's crossed off tonight. Okay, thank you. Oh, no, thanks for bringing it up. It's not beyond me to miss something. You've got to keep an eye on me. Oh, these computers, a couple of times you've gone mute. I didn't hear you. Uh, yeah. No, uh, maybe we muted you on purpose. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> By design. Thanks, Brian. Yes. <laughs> All right, approve the warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. I have a motion by Eric and a second. Second by Gary. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Judy? Aye. Aye. Brian? Aye. <laughs> Gary? Aye. Eric? Aye. The warrants are approved. Next, TA report, Dan. Just one thing for me, um, the, the kind of the official rumor mill, and if there's, there's two, some truth into it, is that from the last round of stimulus funds um, that are coming out of Washington, D.C., three states had a, a significant amount of money for local governments in it. Without me reading what the conditions are, or the strings attached to it are, or how it's supposed to be spent, but it's reportedly $540,000 that would come to the town of Morristown. It's meant for infrastructure. You know, I, I know enough that you can't use it to lower your tax rate or do some other things like that. Once again, I haven't read anything. I haven't seen anything in writing yet. I've had a lot of talk, but I have a tendency not to leave the talk until I can speak to them. Um, I don't know if it's still kicking around in the legislature what their rules are going to be or not. Anyway, um, it, it looks like there, there will be some money that will be available to the town. Um, and what I kind of wanted to do was, was plant a seed in your head to at least start thinking about it. Um, I, I think one of the things that has been kicked around in the town for a lot of years is parking in, in the downtown in particular. Um, we've kicked a lot of things around about improving the parking, expanding the parking more than improving it. Um, so what I would like the board to consider, um, if this money does come through in, in a form that's readily and easily expendable um, without too much red tape, is to let's go ahead and do parking lots. Um, we've talked um, last year about uh, improving the parking down the Oxbow with lighting, paving, finishing the sidewalk down there, um, designating overnight parking um, in that area for winter parking in particular. Um, do the parking lot across the street, reconfigure it, do everything that we need to do over there, and then add the parking that we've talked about over by the noise house. Um, you know, when you, I think when you look at stimulus money and the way you said you can improve business and things in the downtown, just after the discussion, I think that we've had in particular for the businesses in the downtown, it would be a great addition to the downtown. I've talked to Tricia about it a little bit already. She has uh, agreed with me on that. I just think, you know, I, I can't think of anything that we could really do to improve the businesses more than that. You know, you've, you've solved your overnight parking especially your winter overnight parking uh, problem for a very, very long time. You've, you've gained access for your businesses to kind of park in the downtown. Fix the parking lot here. Uh, fix the parking lot here. You know, you could, you could really spend some money and make a drastic improvement. 
I'm not asking you to make a motion or anything. I just want you to think about that kind of proposal. Um, we could do it all under one contract. It you know, would make a nice little project for somebody to come in and do. Um, I, just one of those things I want you to think about. I can't think of right now, in my mind, a better way to, to, to use something like that to come to the town um, to, to really improve the business climate in the town. You know, we, we talked about permits for winter overnight parking. You could literally eliminate that requirement because then you would have no parking for uh, a build out of um, uh, most all the residential areas in the downtown. Right, all the apartments. And all the apartments, you know, you, you would be prepared to deal with that. You wouldn't have that consideration anymore, anything to worry about. So just something to think about. That's really all yeah, I have. I was wondering, after talking to you about it, I was thinking about, you know, if we had anything left, not that we would, but we could look at sidewalks too. That, that's what we were thinking too. But you really want to see what the, what the you know, if, it, if it's, it may be a difference between maintenance and expansion. In this particular case, this is all expansion. Right. They're looking for you to put something in where you're not going necessarily building a sidewalk or rebuilding a road. Actually can say that we're expanding capacity by doing this. And I think it well if, if we could get AOT off and do down here at Bridge Street and White Mouse, if we could pick that parking area up and yeah. get that up to up to stuff because That'd be I'd, nice. I'd put a lot there, you know, a park and ride and, and access to you know, the land down in the back there for that's great park down in there. Yeah, uh, I don't know how that conversation is coming. I know Todd has been working on it for years. Yeah, well, I we I tried working with him right after the the bypass was built and trying to just police, and we haven't been able to get them off center on anything. I think is he still working with Jeff Blanchard? Do you know? I think so. Yeah, I got to meet with Jeff on another project that I'm working on on yeah. Prosperity. Yeah. We couldn't get anything through right away. And Todd spent a lot of time working on it. I spent yeah. a lot of time working on it. I actually oh, okay. gave up because I thought I would make some play with them. And uh, it, it just but didn't. nobody dares to make a decision. That's right. Exactly. I'll so, talk. I'll talk with Jeff too on that. And see. So, okay. yeah. Once again, I'm not asking, but you know, if, if it's true and there, there is that chunk of money, that I think we need to start thinking about it now, um, so that when we get the details, we'll be able to put something together. And again, I'd love to see it happen this summer. I mean, I think we can put something together that fast. Yeah. So, so let's hope it's real and it's yeah. not with lots of red tape attached to it. And that's it's more the red tape that, that scares me with anything. It's federal money. Right. Yeah. You know, and then the problem sometimes with federal money comes in, yeah, they may say it's ready for use, but if you look at the paperwork and everything, you know, we've been through it before. Sometimes it can take three or four years to get a project like that done. Yeah. Um, using federal dollars. I don't know. I don't think anybody really knows right now. But you know, it's been pretty clear that there is a chunk of money somewhere in that range that's going to come from Morristown, or at least be available so at some point. At some point. Yeah, I see. That. Senator Westman had it pretty well outlined there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, the rules are what we haven't seen yet. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. And that's that's the tricky part when you're dealing with federal funds. What the rules are going to be. Okay. That's all I have. That's all you have. Any questions for Dan? I'm sure our national legislators will take care of us. Oh, I'm sure they will. <laughs> Brian like that one. All right, thanks, Dan. Next, select board concerns. Judy. Just want to thank Bill for all the work he's doing with the uh, rescue squad and getting some competent, qualified people in to help with our community. Thank you. Yeah, that's true. Thanks, Judy. Brian. Yes, I've had several people call me, plus one came and see, saw me at work. Um, I think we ought to have a meeting or, or have it on our agenda next time. I guess, I, what do they call it? The River? River Corridor. River Corridor is going on to people's property. There's a guy on the Randolph Road, uh, Richie Sylvester. Yeah, he claims that he's his property is in that. Um, Alexander that lives in uh, Jersey Heights, his yeah. property's on it. So I just think that maybe uh, before we go through with this designation downtown, that we ought to make sure that these people's property aren't being affected in a negative way. Uh, if they wanted to sell it, all of a sudden now it's in in um, you know a, a, the wrong place. Yeah, the corridor over 
Um, where I, they I think there's, there's two things that we're talking about, is the, the town plan and the river quarter production. Um, and, and I would never support putting that in the town plan. None of us would. It makes no sense you know, at all. So I, I don't think anybody's ever going to recommend um, to the select board that those river corridor protections be in the town plan. But you know, I'm still hopeful that even with that not being in the town plan, um, that we can still get a downtown designation, even though it's not in the town plan. Um, so that, that's just my take on it from, from what I've read. Um, I know Todd probably has some different insights on some of that stuff. But I think there's two different things. You know, this is part of the town plan. I never recommend to anybody that those things be in, a, in the town plan. It doesn't make any sense. Um, I think you can look around the state and you can see there's all kinds of downtowns that are in a river quarter. I can use, for example, Waterbury and Montpelier. You know, they, they, they're Johnson. They're, Johnson. Their downtowns flood on up. Most, most every town is along a river. Yeah. Exactly. You know, it's, it's way Vermont was built. That's the thing. So, Having that in the town plan makes absolutely no sense. Um, but I am also equally hopeful that we can still get a designated town town without having that in a town plan. Because once again, I see plenty of designated downtowns out there that don't have that in a town plan um, that flood more often than Morristown ever has. Right. So, you know, once again, I can go back through those examples. Johnson, there are designated Waterbury, areas, Waterbury um, and Montpelier. Yeah. So I, I think there's two different things there. Um, once again, I never recommend that the river corridor protections be put in the town plan. Right. But I still am very hopeful that we can prove to the state that there are plenty of other designated downtowns that don't have it either. So I think they're two different issues. Yeah. Did, did you hear that, Brian? Yeah, I heard that. Uh, so I don't know whether we want to have invite them people in to to explain it to them or or just let them call us again and try to explain it to them <laughs> right i just don't want to i don't want to take and push it aside and and have the planning lamoille planning commission or you know pushing this downtown through put it in there somehow and all of a sudden these people's properties negatively you know affected that's all right right they, they're concerned about it too. That's all. Yeah, and they should be, Brian. Uh, I think what Dan's telling you is that it's part of the downtown designation. LTPC has presented this river corridor piece uh, that they're suggesting that we have in our town plan. Okay. Clearly, is saying he is, he would never recommend that. Yep. That we put that in our town plan. I can understand why those residents residents are concerned. Yep. Uh, I want it not in favor of that that language being in our town plan. We, for all reasons Dan stated, and there's no need to reiterate stuff or give more examples. Um, so we're we're going to just try and move forward with that, uh, in in hopes that uh, the state will will side with us based on other communities that have been granted the downtown designation without using that river corridor language. Right. That sounds that sounds good. Hopefully, people understand that. Once again, once again, I think there's two different things here. There's the town plan, which if you put it in there, you know, you're crazy. I still think we can get a downtown designation without having that in our town plan. I, you know, you can't I, recommend. I think there's only like two or maybe three towns that even address that, and right. they address Agreed it with it. conditions. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and there's so plenty of yeah, there's so plenty of there. designated villages. Centers in, in designated downtowns. Right. Uh, Brattleboro is another perfect example. Yeah. Well, Bob, the Bob, the um, the guy who lives at the tops of Jersey Heights, Jersey yeah. Way. Uh, Bob, what's his last name? Hugh. Oh, he knew. He, knew. he, knew. he yep. He's the one that came down at work and told me about it. Right. So he he it was his group that was talking about this, and he was worried about it. Right. So I I just want to make sure. Yeah. I don't no, know if I quite understand it, but. It's really good to have you bring it up. Yeah. Yeah, Brian, I want to let you know that I am attending those meetings and I am on it. Hey, there we go. Perfect. That's what we needed. <laughs> Thanks, Judy. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Gary, do you have anything? I do not. Eric? I was going to bite my tongue, but that's not in my DNA. No, it's not. So, 
I just sent a precursor based on the, the uh, AATV traffic we had tonight, the comments we had tonight. I just want to reiterate that I'm not trying to be an Austin select board member. I represent all community members, that's all community members, residents, business owners alike. And I think there are many voices to be heard, whether we're talking specifics about the Silver Ridge Road or any other road within the community. We, I have not, as a select board member, been shown an agenda item or a specific proposal being brought in front of this board to consider for ATV uses on highways. Mr. Cloudier brought up the, uh, the, this issue about the 2019 designation uh, on Silver Ridge Road. When we open up the discussion on that specific road, to reiterate that again, because this is not going to be a talk about the rest of the town, this is simply Silver Ridge Road. I am going to listen as I do with everything to both sides of this, both points of view, before I ever commit and make a decision on a vote. And the wording of the actual motion, if one comes from it, is what I will decide based on the testimony we hear from the residents. And I, I, uh, I, I love that we've gotten the participation we have in the email traffic, the phone calls, and I encourage people to, to continue to want to be heard when we come together on this issue. It will be civil. It will be neighbors and neighbors. And uh, I think we will come to a resolution one way or the other, without a doubt. But I will not be pigeonholed into making a decision before an actual motion is put on the table. Sounds good. All right, and I'm all set. I've said enough about that stuff tonight. I, actually, I do, I do uh, recognize that we have a lot more participation virtually which I really like. It's pleased to have, uh, I'm really pleased to have other people taking part and at least tuning in, even if they're not saying anything. It's, um, you know, it's the best we can do right now. And uh, it's great. The more people that voice their opinions or at least listen and learn, the better. So thank you for that, for everybody that's out there listening. That's, that's all I have. Next, old business. Appointment of a public official. I make a motion to enter executive session to discuss appointment or employment or evaluation of public officer or employee. Pursuant to Title I, VSA Section 313, Section 4 of the Vermont Statutes. To include Dan Lemon and Gina and Sarah and the Chief. The Chief. Police Chief. Yes. Yes. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye by roll call, Judy. Aye. Brian. Aye. Gary. Aye. Eric. Aye. Motion is passed. Can I hang up? Yeah, we're gonna sign up.